Let's do it. If you're already on my email newsletter list, you've probably already seen a few clips of this new Furic number no. 7 Clear Pro Cup. The wall thickness is a little bit beefier than the number no. 8. It's rated at 200 amps for both AC and DC. And I did a few little clips on an outside corner joint using the little MT200 machine. My good friend Andrew Carden was doing the welding and I was filming. We definitely learned a few things about how AC balance and argon coverage, argon flow rate, relate to one another. So we'll unpack that in a future video. So stay tuned for that. But we thought we would also kind of test this number seven cup, like really put it to the test at high amperage. What better way to do that than a big chunk of aluminum on a positioner? And since both Andrew Carden and Brad Goodman were both visiting my shop, Brad Goodman was giving us some lessons in pedal pumping. But this first pass here, we didn't pump the pedal at all because when you're talking about something thick like this, you need to soak some heat in there first. So we used straight current at 60 hertz and set the positioner to go very slow to soak some heat. The machine was reading 273 amps. We did have some settings using the expansion card, so that means we were able to set amplitude settings, different amperage on EN and EP. Brad will go over that toward the end of the video. Notice how the ripples are getting less distinct here as the, the part gets heat soaked. That's a little strong hand tools prop that he's using there to stay steady. Now after we get this first pass in there, tapering off not to leave a crater eye, now that piece is nice and hot. It's essentially the same as a preheat. Now we're getting into some pedal pumping practice. From the previous pass you saw how that once the part got heat soaked, the ripples became a lot less distinct. Well, pumping the pedal kind of puts ripples in there. And so it's not necessarily a, a good thing or a bad thing. It's just some customers want a distinct look. So Brad's showing us how to pump the pedal today to get that look. He's, he's not going on and off. He's basically only letting off maybe 30%, 30 to 35%, something like that. Just enough to let the puddle cool momentarily. And then when he feeds that cold filler rod in there, it adds a very distinct ripple. Pumping the pedal has another use other than just adding a ripple. For instance, when you're welding around corners or around coped tubing and you don't, you're not ready for a pulse yet, you can pulse it yourself. So instead of having like one pulse a second, you could have one and a half or 0.5 pulses a second or whenever you're ready to add that rod. And that's why a lot of motorsports welders use the pedal pumping technique because they're almost always welding around a corner or around some coped tube joint. It's worth noting, and again, we'll show the settings on the Dynasty 280 at the end of this video, but it's worth noting we used a 332nd 2% lanthanated electrode. Again, 273 amps with a 332nd tungsten. Now, the only way I've ever done that is with this machine, and that's because of the amplitude settings. We're able to dial down the electrode positive portion of the AC cycle, and that tip is really rounded, but it's still it's holding up just fine. And this number seven clear cup from Michael Furick is, is rated at 200 amps AC or DC. That's a very conservative rating again, because we hammered it 273 amps for over a minute going a full round on here. And now we're back to back pumping the pedal and we're probably up around 180 amps peak at times here, but not giving it much rest at all. Here we taper off to not leave a crater hole back up a little bit. It's easy to leave a crater eye on aluminum and that'll crack. You don't want to do that. And sometimes you got to add a little extra filler as well as kind of swirl the puddle as you taper off. First pass, you kind of just hammered it with straight current. Hammered it with straight current and got some heat built up in it. And then the second pass, once it got some heat built in it, I could, I could pedal pump it. So, I mean, it, I mean it, was actually, it actually kind of helps you get in the rhythm because you hear, nah, nah, mm -hmm. nah. it's just almost like pulsing, you just listen. Get that rhythm going. This was fun, so we're going to do one more layer here. Brad's going to lay down the first pass, and then Andrew's going to pick up the torch, lay down the second pass, and then I'm going to take a run at the top pass. And mine probably looked the worst, but it was a whole lot of fun doing the pedal pump thing, and I learned a lot. All right, so we just did this multi-pass on the little um, piece we set up in the position here. We're trying to kind of check in the machine and some different settings and we wanted to see what the machine, the tungsten, and the cut would do at a high amperage situation. So what we were actually running, uh, our average amperage is 272 amps. And on our first pass, like Jody said, we ran it full throttle to get some heat into the part. 
and it, it really worked. The cup held up, the tungsten held up. But let's go over this, the settings. I did We did set this uh, amperage independently. You can do this on the Dynasty with the expansion card. So on our EN side, we were at advanced square wave at 280 amps, maxed out on the Dynasty 280. Then we went to the EP side, we lowered that just a bit, and I came up on it from a lower number up to 250 because actually I wanted it to help put a little bit more heat in the part. So I raised the EP up some, uh, regardless of what people tell you, it will help uh, transfer some heat back into the part. So it's not much difference, but just a little bit difference to a little bit different to uh, help the tungsten erosion just a bit. And then we went, we're at 72% 72, 72 on the AC balance. And then when we came down to frequency, I dropped down to 60 hertz because the parts was so thick, we wanted that uh, we wanted that lag time on the frequency to help put a little extra heat in the part. But the machine held up fine. The torch, uh, it was about a 250, 280 amp torch. Uh, the, the torch held up fine. The tungsten didn't erode as bad uh, as you think it would be in a 330 seconds. Most people would step up to an eighth inch tungsten for this project, but we made it work the other way just to show you that the adjustability on the machine is there uh, if you know what you're adjusting. So pretty fun little project. I started using clear cups just strictly to film with, but I learned really quickly they help me see better too. If you'd like to try one out, you can learn more at weldmonger.com. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for your support.